electronic structure. While the number of protons determines the identity of an atom, remember every element has a unique atomic number. Every element has a certain number of protons in its nucleus. While the number of protons determines the identity of an atom, the electron arrangement determines the reactivity of an atom. Chemical reactions occur when the electrons of different atoms interact with one another. This is why it is so important to understand the electronic structure of an atom. Knowing how the electrons are arranged in an atom can help chemists predict how that atom will react with other substances. Quantum numbers, a set of four numbers used to describe the energy and most probable location of an electron. Quantum numbers are used to describe an electron in an orbital. The first three quantum numbers describe orbital properties such as size, distance from the nucleus, shape, and orientation in space. The last quantum number describes the direction of the electron spin. The first quantum number is principal energy level with the symbol N. A principal energy level is the region around the nucleus where the electron is moving. N can have values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. As N increases, an electron's distance from the nucleus increases, meaning it's easier to remove an electron from an atom. The further away an electron is from the nucleus, the easier it is for the electron to be lost. As N increases, the energy of the electron increases. As N increases, the size of the electron cloud increases. To find the number of electrons that can exist in a principal energy level, we use the formula 2n squared. That means in the first energy level, we can have two electrons. In the second energy level, we can have eight electrons. In the third energy level, there can be 18 electrons. And in the fourth energy level, we can have 32 electrons. This picture shows the relative sizes of the first and the second energy level. N equals 1 is a smaller electron cloud than N equals 2. N equals 1 is closer to the nucleus. N equals 1 has less energy. And N equals 1 can only hold two electrons. Let's consider the second quantum number, sublevels. Every energy level can be divided into sublevels with slightly different energies. The names of the sublevels are S, P, D, and F. Each energy level has N sublevels. That means if you're in the first energy level, N equals 1, there exists one sublevel. Its name is 1s. In the second energy level, when n equals 2, there exists two sublevels. Their names are 2s and 2p. In the third energy level, when n equals 3, there exists three sublevels 3s, 3p, 3d. And when n equals 4, or you're in the fourth energy level, there exists four sublevels. Their names are 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f. The sublevel tells you the shape of the electron cloud. S, P, D, and F sublevels 
all have different shapes. A 1s orbital is a sphere. It's closest to the nucleus with the least amount of energy. A 2s orbital is also a sphere. The 2s electrons have higher energy than the 1s electrons. The 2s electrons are further from the nucleus than the 1s electrons. And the 2s orbital is larger than the 1s orbital. In the next picture, we see a 1s, a 2s, and a 3s orbital. All s sublevels are spherical in shape. There are three 2p orbitals. The three 2p orbitals are located along the x, y, and z axes. The three 2p orbitals are located the same distance from the nucleus with the same amount of energy. Notice the shape of a p orbital. They have the shape of a dumbbell. It doesn't matter if it's 2p, 3p, 4p, all p orbitals have a dumbbell shape. This picture right here shows you the shapes of S, P, D, and F. You will only have to remember that an S is sphere and P is dumbbell. Let's look at the third quantum number, orbitals. Every sublevel is made up of one or more orbitals. An orbital is the region in the electron cloud in which the electrons are moving. Electrons move in orbitals within the electron cloud. It refers to how the orbital is directed in space, its orientation. Each orbital can hold two electrons. An S sublevel has one orbital, which means any S sublevel can hold two electrons. In this picture, we see our S spherical shaped orbital, and there's only one. That means an S sublevel has one orbital, and it can only hold two electrons. A p sublevel has three orbitals, three directions, three different orientations in space. Since each orbital can hold two electrons, there can be six electrons in a p sublevel. In this diagram, we see the three different orientations in space. Since there are three different orientations, there are three orbitals each orbital holding two electrons, there can be six electrons in a p sublevel. A d sublevel has five orbitals, which means 10 electrons can be in any d sublevel. That means there are five different orientations for a d sublevel. An f sublevel has seven orbitals. 7 orbitals times 2, 14 total electrons can be in any F sublevel. That means there are going to be 7 different orientations in which the orbital is directed in space. Electron configuration symbols. We're going to be looking at electron configurations. The big 5 represents the energy level. The F represents the sub-energy level, and the superscript 3 represents how many electrons are in that sub-energy level, 5F3. We're talking about an electron in the fifth energy level, in an F sub-level, and there are three electrons in the 5F sub-level. Our last quantum number is spin. 
Since orbitals can hold two electrons and each have a negative charge, they must spin in opposite directions. We denote spin by arrows. The first arrow pointing up clockwise, the downward directed arrow representing counterclockwise. There are three principles about electrons that you need to know. The first one is the off-bar principle. The off-bar principle says that electrons will fill lowest energy levels, lowest energy sublevels first. Hun's rule. Electrons in the same sublevel will occupy empty orbitals before pairing with other electrons. The Pauli exclusion principle. No two electrons in the same atom can have the same four quantum numbers. Let's look at these in detail. When n equals 1, we're in the lowest energy level. There is one sublevel in the first energy level. Its name is 1s. In the second energy level, there are two sublevels, 2s, 2p. In the third energy level, there are three sublevels, 3s, 3p, 3d. Now be careful because look at what happens when we go to the fourth energy level. The 4s sublevel actually has less energy than 3d. That means, according to Offbaugh, electrons fill lowest energy levels first and will go 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, and so on. Let's see what happens. Remember, any s sublevel only has one orbital, 1s, 2s, 3s, and 4s. A p sublevel has three orbitals, 2p, 3p, 4p, three orbitals, each holding two electrons for a total of six electrons in any p sublevel. A d sublevel has five orbitals, each holding two electrons for a total of ten electrons. And finally, we have an F sublevel with seven orbitals for a total of 14 electrons. According to Offbaugh, electrons fill lowest energy levels, lowest energy sublevels first. To help you remember the order in which electrons fill, there is something called the diagonal rule. You can make this diagram to determine which energy levels, which sublevels are filled first. Let's draw in our diagonals. 1s, then comes 2s, then 2p3s, 3p4s, 3d4p5s, 4d5p6s, 4f 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d. This allows you to determine the order in which sublevels fill. Hun's rule says that within a sublevel, place one electron per orbital before pairing them. This is also known as the empty seat on the bus principle. The first diagram is not correct. You don't pair electrons until you have to. This is Hun's rule. 